Hello everyone. Today we're going to be showing you how to create an e-ink uh, picture frame. So you can show black and white artwork such as comic book or images. And uh, yeah, it's pretty easy, sort of-ish, if you know C programming, which I don't. And that's what this video is for, is for people like me who struggled with C programming and try to get you started with this e-ink display. This is the WaveShare monitor that I purchased. And again, I preference, if you don't know C programming, this is probably not the one for you. If you know C pro programming, then by all means get it. It's a beautiful monitor. Uh, if you know Python, this is not the monitor for you because, well, they haven't supported it for Python yet, which is my biggest, biggest complaint. And the documentation for it is just subpar by comparison to their other e-ink displays or other uh, LCD displays. Okay, so here it is. I finally got it working. As you can see, there's a few images uh, that I took photos of, of different things on it, uh, such as comic book art and some black and white artwork. And as you can see, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. But to get it to this point was a pain in the butt. So let's start getting into the code to create this. Setting up the hardware is pretty easy. As you can see, right down there is the Raspberry Pi board. There's the header or the hat. All right, so that's pretty simple. Uh, you just plug that into your, uh, your pins on your, your Raspberry Pi. And in this case, it's a Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, Zero 02W to be, to be more accurate. And then you plug in your ribbon to this board here. And then, then this ribbon here goes to your monitor. Now see this little QR code here? That's very important. Uh, there's a little number on there. Mine says minus 1.45. That's very important. Something you're going to need to know in just a few minutes. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, I built a, a case and everything to put it on uh, behind the board. So, just plugs into here. These lock the uh, pin into place. One on each side. See here? And then uh, this, this visor here basically gives me the distance I need to cover this. And then this is how you hang it. Um, as you can see, I 3D printed this as a design with these uh, dovetails, which match up to the dovetails up there. As you can see, those are actual dove dovetails with the white part out and the uh, closest part to the wall. That's so it's, it slips, it doesn't, it doesn't slip off. So, um, yeah, so I did that. If you want that 3D file, let me know and uh, I'll get that to you as well. So uh, let's get back to the install and uh, we'll, we can continue with that. Okay, so let's start out with by installing Raspberry Pi onto your SD card. This is a simple uh, video uh, portion of it. So if you already know how to do it, just go ahead and skip forward. But for those of you who don't, it's really simple. Download Raspberry Pi Imager from the internet. I'll put a link at the bottom of the page and then choose your operating system. The basic one is fine. Choose your storage, storage comes up, uh, your SD card, and then this is important right here, your settings. You want to go ahead and put your information for your, what you want to call this on your network when you call it, and then uh, your SSH, you definitely want to make sure you have that in, enabled, and set a username password for your uh, system. This will be both for your computer and SSH for the uh, Raspberry Pi and then uh, your network, and then your local time, wherever you are. So do that, hit uh, write, let you know everything's gonna be erased, yep. And then go get a cup of coffee. Okay, as you can see, I put the card into the Raspberry Pi Zero, and something I did to help make my life a little easier when I built this case, is I put this on here. This is a little magnetic charging port. So I got a cable, a little micro USB cable coming from the Pi, sneaking through to a little port, and then I plug in one of these little fellas into it, into the into the extension cable end, and then for when I want to charge this thing up or put power to it, I just grab the other end of the magnetic port, which is this, and it just clicks onto place. And as you can see, power's going on, and I don't accidentally rip something out of the housing or the destroy the board if something comes loose or something gets tugged 
And so, yeah, that's something you might, guys might want to try is putting these like little magnetic strips on. All right. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is log into your Raspberry Pi. You have to go to your router, which I'm not sure what router you have, if you have what, whatever it is. Um, if you've built a Raspberry Pi before, you already know how to do this. But for those of you who don't, uh, find your router information, log in and find out what the name of your Raspberry Pi, its IP address. Once you get that, then come to something like PuTTY, which is an SSH terminal and I'll go ahead and fill out the information up here. In my case, it's 192.168.7.145. And by default, it's always port 22. And go ahead and click open. And then you should get this login screen and then put in the credentials you set up when you did your Pi. In my case, it was uh, eight by 10 frame. And then my password. Okay, now if you don't didn't set all that up initially, the username password, the uh, uh, default password I think is Pi and then Raspberry is the password. But I always like to set this up beforehand. So, okay, so now that we have this, this is basically your Pi's terminal. Let's go ahead and update everything to begin with. So we're gonna go ahead and type in sudo apt update. We're gonna do that. And we're going to, at the same time, we're going to do sudo apt upgrade. Now you can do these commands separately. Do one, then the other. But I'm lazy and I like to do them both at the same time. So we'll go ahead and let that do its thing. And this will take a while. So again, go get yourself a cup of coffee. When it gets to this point, it asks if you want to continue, install stuff, blah, blah, blah. Yes, of course, you want to continue. Now that everything's been updated and upgraded and all that good stuff, uh, first thing I need to do is set up your configuration so it can read the EE display. So we got to go to sudo raspy config. Oh, I spelled that wrong. sudo raspy. Okay, so three things you need to enable here. And they all are in here, the interface option. First you wanna do VNC, yes. It's gonna do its thing. Okay, back to interface, SPI, yes. Okay, interface, and I2C, okay. Okay, once that's done, let's go ahead and bring this tab down to finish. And then let's go ahead and reboot the system just to make sure everything took. So sudo reboot. Yep, it's gonna lose connection. Okay, at this point, you basically got a Raspberry Pi that's working completely, wholeheartedly. You can plug a HDMI, HDMI monitor and USB keyboard and you're good to go use it like a regular computer. But I'm going to do one extra thing that's not needed but believe me it saves you a lot of time and headache when going for uh, other projects not just what we're doing but for other projects and that's installing Samba so you can actually see the Pi on your network and gain access to it through your standard you know uh, Explorer browser from any other computer. So let's install that real quick. And this is something I do with all my pies, regardless of the project I'm on, is install Samba. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're back on the pie. And the first thing we're gonna do is do sudo apt install S-A-M-B-A, -A, Samba. Let's continue, yes. Okay, so now once that's done, now we have to configure it. And this is, this is actually pretty easy to configure. That's sudo nano, which is the name of the text editing program for uh, Pi, or one of them anyways. etc, that's the directory the file's in, 
SAMVA into that directory, and the file is actually called smv.config or conf, con f. Oops, I misspelled etc. sudo nano etc. SAMVA SAMVA SMV dot config. There we go. So she gets something that looks like this. All right, first thing we want to do is under work groups, let's go ahead and uh, type in security equals 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 user and then net bios name equals the name of your Raspberry Pi. In <clears throat> my case, it's going to be uh, 8 by 10 frame. Okay, so let's go all the way to the bottom and add our own code. Now you can go in here and change all this stuff as you want. Um, you really don't really need to. Um, what does is fine. So let's go ahead and come down to here to our and put our own SharePoint in. So brackets, and this is the name of your share. So we're gonna call this eight by 10 frame. Again, you can name it whatever you want, but it's good to name it whatever it is. So it uh, keeps things organized when you're looking on your network. Okay. All right, so we wanna make this public. Yes. Browsable. Yes, apologize I'm not the fastest typer. Um, writable. Yes. Path equals word slash home word slash eight by eight or ten frame. This is the name of the user that you created. So okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, equals yes. Create mask zero seven seven seven. Don't quite spell create right. Alrighty, comment. I see guest account. This needs to be the same as your username. So in my case, it's eight by 10 frame. Okay. And then for users, and the same thing, eight, eight by 10 frame. And then we want to make sure any directories that get caught, uh, made while we're browsing through another computer get proper permissions. Okay, that should be it. Let me double check, make sure I spelled everything because my spelling is bad. And it is. So let's go ahead and X guess. There we go. And then now we need to restart the Samba server. So it takes all those new sa settings into account. So sudo uh, system um, control ctl restart smbd. Hopefully no errors. Good. Yay. All right. So now we go to a drive here or a folder here and type in your that IP address to your Pi, which is one name. Two point one six eight point one seven and one forty five in my case. Nine two one two. Oops, forgot the other word slash. Told you. Bad. There it is. Eight by ten frame. And now I can access it um, just like any other computer. And I can even VNC into it now. 
So come over here, B and C pops up. And so here is our Raspberry Pi working like a regular Raspberry Pi. Okay, so this basically was to get your Pi up and running before we've added the EE information. So for those of you who already know how to set up a, a Raspberry Pi, you could have skipped this whole entire video completely. So I apologize for that, for not prefacing that in the beginning, but uh, yeah. So let's get on to the next video, the meat and potatoes of it, and putting in the uh, code for getting the e-ink up and running. All right, so see you at the next video.